worth noting tonight. And that, of course, is head coach Nell Fortner, who is back on the bench after missing a couple of her own with illness. And the tip has us underway. It goes to, guess who else is in the lineup tonight? Kayla King for Virginia Tech. Both of those somewhat questionable and day-to-day -day coming in, but both Amor and King, a welcome sight in the starting lineup for those filling up Castle Coliseum as we speak. Goes inside to Kitley, turn around, and she drops home the first bucket of the night. Isn't that fitting? The joke is death taxes and Elizabeth Kitley's jumper. Another 30-point performance, her fifth against the Clemson Tigers on Sunday, filling up the gap when you talk about the absence of Amor, who brings it up the floor one more time. Looking ahead to Keene. You're wearing that sleeve on that right leg. But again, both of them heavily involved in shoot-around earlier today. Both of their names in the starting lineup tonight. Kitley showing her range. She's good on her first two from the floor. Uh, yeah, there, are, there are no more superlatives that we can give to Liz Kentley. She was two-time ACC Player of the Year, and she is significantly better than either one of those versions of herself. Averages a double-double if you haven't been around the ACC in recent days. double-doubles on this season. That includes, when you talk about her overall point production, 22-plus every time she hits the floor on average. Boy, what a move down the right side as this is laid home. Finished off by Tony Morgan. Keep an eye on this sophomore out of Tallahassee as well. Uh, one of the best athletes in the league. Plays a variety of sports. Great track athlete. Explosive point guard. Coming off a double-double of her own in a win over BC at home at the Camish Pavilion for Georgia Tech. Worth underscoring. This is a Georgia Tech team having won eight of their last 11 contest coach. So playing much better as they work into the thick of ACC play. Two hot teams. They've won eight out of 11. Virginia Tech's won nine out of 11. And, and Virginia Tech trying to run the Castle Coliseum streak to 21 overall, 13 consecutive in the ACC. That's just how kind this place has been. This shot kind goes down for Samuel. Olivia Samuel, her first points of the night. Samuel in that lineup because we're rebounding in defense, but make no mistake, she can make a three also, the Wake Forest transfer. Yeah, the Connecticut native averages right at three per contest. She's already there. Just a little over that when you talk about her averages, but a big shot early as this run for Virginia Tech grabs your attention at 7-2 to get things started for the Hokies. Five to shoot for Georgia Tech, and this rims off. And look who's there to clean it up. Another play on the other end of the floor worthy of attention for Samuel. Georgia Tech, a really good defensive team. That's kind of their identity since Nell Fortner has been on the flats. It's been her identity for a long time. Whether, sure you, whether you talk about Auburn, whether you talk about Purdue, or the Olympic impact she's had, you know they're going to play strong defense. How about this turnaround? From Kitley, everything she puts in the air, finding the bottom of the net in the opening sequence. Yeah, big size advantage over Blackshear, who's really a, more of a forward, but a great athlete. Well, the All-Americans seeming to fill it in the early stages here tonight. We get a whistle and a foul call underneath. Looks, looks like, like that's going to be on Keen. Yeah, it looks like Kayla King on the drive right there. Speaking of Nell Fortner, remember now, she watched on the couch the last couple of games. Her resume, so impressive. Her fingerprints all over this sport, Coach. Yeah, she, she is one of, the, one of the icons in women's basketball, whether you're talking about Olympics or whether you're talking about the collegiate level. Substitution as Termas comes in off the bench for Georgia Tech ahead of the inbound. And Termas is in for one reason, to guard Liz Kitley, another 6'6 player. Well, finding a spot between the trees there momentarily was Morgan, but she could not get the shot to fall, and here's Amor up the floor with it. Pumps this off to Winslow. Down the right side, and she'll lay it home off the glass. The red shirt freshman. She, she finds a way to make plays in every game. Had her first career start versus the Tigers as they tried to find enough bodies to make it work. And she's followed that up with a nice start here as well. Morgan quiets the crowd momentarily with this one falling through. Morgan's number 24 ESPN recruit in the country. Averages over 14 a game from the point guard spot. 14.3, pulls down seven boards, and she's in the top five in the ACC in assists with over four of those per contest, so she provides so very much. 
Yeah, now Termas for Georgia Tech. Here's matches a look at Elizabeth Gidley size-wise. The head coach of the Hokies, you know what he has done here. And uh, Kenny Brooks certainly happy to have the full contingency tonight, Coach. And they've gotten better every single year Kenny Brooks has been here. Think and there's that. a big reason. Well, that'll help, right? When you got players that can make those kind of shots. What did he say? In talking about Kitley, he said she scored 30 the other night. Every time she doesn't score 30, everybody wants to talk about how can you adjust things, what can you do? He said, this is the way she's built. You let her play the game the way she's built. And that's certainly working out very well in the first period tonight. Straight up defensively and able to turn this aside is Eck. A great Tilda, stand. Tilda Eck with a good job against Dunn right there. There's Amor trying to lay that back home. House might have come down, but it's just off the mark. 13-4 start for Virginia Tech, and this may serve to quiet things momentarily as Noreda is able to find the bottom of the net. Yeah, you better get back. Georgia Tech has a bunch of people that can push the ball down the floor. Nice alert play after Amor missed the layup. She's at the basket, so she's not back on defense. But you know where she is? She's back on offense. Yes, she is. There's a three ball, and Amor's turn, return being heralded here inside Castle Coliseum. And it is a 10-point advantage for the Hokies. Boards cleaned up, shot put back, and eventually going to be into the hands of Eck one more time. Yeah, Georgia Tech went right back to that matchup. They liked Morgan going against Wenzel. Step back for Amor. That rims off, and it is chased down on the far side by Blackshear. That name's familiar. It should be. Latest to the Blackshear family. Of course, Kerry Blackshear played here at Virginia Tech. One of the standouts. And his sister playing there in the Atlanta area, making her trip to Blacksburg tonight. Timeout on the floor. Chance for the fans to catch their breath after a fast start for the Hokies. Looks like you won something. That she got back into the coaching scene in 2019 at Georgia Tech with, with big things set on her mind at a school she says she considers to be a gold mine. Guys? Well, has a mind on developing young players still focused in on the essence, on the foundational elements of coaching that have been such a part of her career. But I loved what she told us at Shoot Around today. She said, you know, sitting on the couch watching the last couple of games, she said, if anything, it gave me a different lens and a set of fresh eyes to come back and tackle some things with this young team. Yeah, she talked about the big perspective and, uh, and how tough it was to sit on that couch and not be able to do something about what she saw. Said one thing she wanted, play harder, attack. Well, coming out trying to do that tonight, but running into a hot shooting Virginia Tech team. Seven of 10 from the floor to begin. Now, you can make it 8 of 11, and another bucket for Kitley, who already has put together a double-digit performance to start this night yeah. for Virginia Tech. Yeah, a, a beautiful screen and a wonderful pass by Matilda Eck in perfect timing. Well, perfect is a nice word to use as this is swatted away by Strack. How about that effort? And they're just as big on defense here in Blacksburg. Listen to them on the edge of their seats. Yeah, really, really a tough situation, you know, with a lot of tough matchups. But you can erase the mistake when you've got somebody at 6'5 behind you and Kitley at 6'6. Able to work through all of that, quiet the crowd momentarily as Morgan lays this off the glass and inside three minutes to go in the opening period. Morgan's uh, one of those tough matchups. A much needed bucket for Georgia Tech. You used the word perfect a moment ago. That's exactly what Kitley is from the floor so far. Five for five her start. Season open teammate here and this is going to stay out top. Guess who's there? Make it six of six. Right on cue. Liz Kitley, the All-American Coach Kenny Brooks saying unquestioned best player in the ACC, and he should feel that way, particularly when he sees the type of performances he's witnessing tonight. Yeah, and, and you know, I said it earlier, and uh, it sounds crazy to say, but two-time player of the year, and she is a lot better than she was a year ago. She does more things. There's more diversity to her game. She's a better defender, and, and she's always been a great leader. Pulls down the board here, averages 11.2 of those to go alongside the 22 points on average per night. She already has 12 and three rebounds in this contest. They go inside to Kitley again. Her turnaround falls. A beautiful fadeaway to drop home 
her latest bucket, and why not? Timeout taken by the Jackets. Yeah, Coach Fortner had that exasperated look on her face. What more do you do? Well, I got to ask you, what can you do in a timeout? Not much you can draw up to stay Liz Kitley. Someone in this room stole my autographed basketball, signed by the 1948 All-Star Team. So I've called in a specialist, an ease specialist. Okay, let's start with what we do know. Geico makes it easy to bundle coverage for your car and home. Yeah, even precious sports memorabilia. What a relief. Let's get back to charades. But I was also gonna crack the case. Well, I'm pretty sure it's true. Me? It's easy to bundle your home and car. It's easy to Geico. Fourteen points for Kitley to this juncture. And you see what it has meant across the last handful of games. It really bridged the gap in many ways, Coach, certainly on Sunday in the contest against Clemson. But with a full contingency for the Hokies, it seems she's been able to settle into her own rhythm tonight. Yeah, she, she really has. And, and Georgia Tech's done an interesting thing now. Rather than match size, they've gone with a smaller lineup. Turn around. Everything being put up falls, and for the freshman out of Buffalo, Clara Strack a bucket. Hokey sharing the ball, seven assists on 11 field goals so far. And I'm going to say it again. Let's use that number 11. 11 field goals in 15 tries for the Hokies to this juncture. Perhaps that will help put the pause button on it momentarily as this falls. Uh, three ball for Augustinida. That is... Rusne Agustinaida had a career-high 30 in November against the Florida Gators. Yeah, you can't go under that ball screen with her. A native of Lithuania, one of the many international players on this group. But Amor reminds everybody she's back in the lineup tonight. Hard drive down the right side of the lane and the finish right there. Yeah, nice answer. Georgia Tech makes a big three. Amor comes straight back and gets a wide open layup, beating her man off the dribble. You get that tonight. Georgia versus Georgia Tech. You don't always get that without the block no, G, right? No, we needed that. But uh, yeah, Virginia Tech has it in terms of Amor. How about this move to find enough of a window to score for Morgan again? Tony Morgan has been impressive when she's been able to get near the hoop for Georgia Tech thus far. Yeah, she's scoring all her points in the paint and really doing a great job of beating whoever guards her off the dribble. Leads the Jackets with four and shows her defensive ability here as well. Just swatch that away. It we, will stay on this end. We told you what an athlete she was. And her fifth double-double of the year against BC. And a nice hand as the departure of Strack. Ends up working Baker into the lineup. Just ahead of the horn. When everything's going your way, everything's going your way. You can up and sell it. Yeah. This team starting 13 of 18 from the floor out to a 28-13 advantage, but you get a glimpse, a little window there, Coach, into just how much respect there is in the room for Kenny Brooks. One of the best in the country, and this program is built on trust. He trusts his trust in the players, and they're trusting him that they're that he's going to put them in a position to succeed. On that last possession, Georgia Tech out of the timeout went to the matchup Blackshear against Kitley, and Blackshear was able to beat Liz Kitley off the dribble. We'll probably see that again. Going to need to see a lot more of it with the way things have started for Georgia Tech. A good look at Coach Brooks leading this team to the ACC tournament crown a year ago. Of course, that final four run. You know, so many of the pieces did not return. The headline pieces may have, Coach, but there's still a lot of work that has been done to get to this juncture in the season with this team nationally ranked and clicking on all cylinders on a night like this. Replacing a lot of really good players, Taylor Soul, Kayana Trailer, DeAsia Gregg, uh, and, and the new players are all learning Coach Brooks' system and how to play with each other. You reference Taylor Soul in the building tonight, among others. We saw Mike Young looking on, his team picking up a big win yeah, a couple this big week wins already. In a row for Absolutely. The men. Back uh, to keep an eye on what's happening here for the 19th ranked women's basketball team in the country on this night. That foul a moment ago picked up by Blackshear, her first, as we were walking it through some of the Kenny Brooks accolades. And now Georgia Tech slowing this possession down, only six to shoot for the Jackets. Goes to the interior. Now kicked back out to Morgan. She'll find 
the ability to weave down the left side of the lane, and she's got the and one coming to try to knock three up on the board the old-fashioned way. Yeah, Dunn had Amor posted up. Kitley helped a little bit, and they kicked it out to Morgan, and she drives it down a seam to the basket. She's five for ten. The rest of the team is two for eight. First picked up on Kitley here as you see her come over and draw the foul. And does Morgan and then knocks this down, and that will... Pull Georgia Tech back within 10. You know, if you're the Jackets right now, Coach, with the way Virginia Tech shot coming out of the gate, you have to feel like you withstood it to some degree and are a bucket away now. If they can force the turnover, they can say this is off of the Jackets and will be Hokies basketball. But to be only down 10 right now, if you're Georgia Tech in the early stages of the second period, has to be somewhat of a win. Yeah, they've hung in there and, and cut it back to, you know, if they can get it even to single digits, before halftime, I would think they would feel pretty good about things, but there's a lot of time left in this basketball game. Kitley missing her most recent shot after an 8 of 8 start from the floor. This one from distance, and it's eventually down into the hands of Noreno. Trying to force this inside, try to get it to Dunn. Yeah, Dunn hadn't gotten off to a great start, so she's going down to that block where she's really comfortable. First personal picked up by Samuel here. Yeah, Dunn, talk about the opposite scenario right now is an 0 of 4 start from the floor for the Jackets leading scorer averaging 16.2 per contest. Another whistle and the foul's starting to mount just a little bit on this end of the floor. And that's a big one on Kayla King, her second, so she'll immediately come out of the game. Samuel picks up one. Kitley picked up one. Those, uh, they're first, and you said it. Here is King, two down. We hadn't talked about it that much, but how huge was it to have King available tonight? It was some question whether or not she would play. Well, Coach Brooks calls her his glue. He really trusts her, and she's been in the program five years and can do a little bit of everything. She's a good perimeter defender, a good handler, great decision maker, not to mention a really good three-point shooter. Average is right at eight per contest. And, of course, uh, you know, 266 threes, which is top five when you talk about Virginia Tech's list. And Georgia Tech's been good on this end other than being able to guard Kitley. Kicks this out top. Also zip pass inside, fighting for every inch of real estate just outside the lane, and in the end, winning the battle is Samuel. Really nice patience by the veteran from Wake Forest. She just took her time, didn't panic, finally got an opening. So Wake Forest connection strong. You think about the family connections, obviously, for Kitley and outstanding ACC athletes. What a find it was to go to Winston-Salem and come away with her. This is an answer for Georgia Tech on the other end of the floor as Augusta Nida gets involved. Yeah, you can't, you can't give her any space at all. That's how good a shooter she is. Yeah, and that's her prime space, prime real estate. This is for Eck down the left side. The junior lays home a bucket. Yeah, and Eck is such a good perimeter shooter. Sometimes they overplay her to the point where she has an opportunity to go the hole. Nice finish by the transfer. Yeah, so much talk about the international players for Georgia Tech, native of Sweden, getting involved on the Virginia Tech side of things. By the way, already grabbing seven assists in the return. Amor's presence being felt in more than just the scoring department. This rattles off and back into the hands of the Jackets. Now a couple of teammates fighting for it. It'll yeah. be cleaned out and slowed down. Augusta Nida has it up top. Blackshear is an elite offensive rebounder. It's going to have to be chased down by Blackshear. Getting late, just three to shoot for the Jackets. It's going to require a three. Morgan heaves one up. Gets the front of the iron, but the rebound to Kitley. Amor pushes it, didn't have any help. Somehow weaves through traffic. Still finds a window in which to shoot. And it rattles home. That is a highlight. <laughs> but you have I to don't clip, know how to describe it. But you have to clip the entire sequence. Yes. Impressive to get open, and the finish just as true. Wow. 34-21, the start. Nothing like the home cooking for the Hokies. Think on this. They're trying for a 21st straight at Castle. Looking to extend the record for the program. 13 in a row in the ACC if things continue to go this well tonight. Hokies really enjoying their time, particularly on this floor, Coach. Yeah, that was a good play by Kitley defensively against Blackshear. Didn't give her a chance to wheel back to that strong right hand. You, 
You've been watching that matchup all night long. Blackshear Kittley, keep an eye on it. It's worth another glance at what Amor did just to get open, much less finishing with the score. I want you to describe that one. I want to hear that play-by-play, -play, you know, step-by-step. -step. There are no <laughs> words. We'll have to yield to some of the radio play-by-play -play guys to make sure you get every single element of that activity. It was certainly something to wow you from Amor. And it is a reminder, let's go back to the key storyline as Kitley works her way to the charity stripe here to try and build upon this 34-21 advantage. You know, if you wanted a snapshot of how important it is to have Georgia Amor back coach, there it is. Yeah, exactly. And, and you heard the crowd reaction. And, you know, not only is she the leader as the point guard, she's also the emotional leader of this team. And then Kitley is the veteran leader of this team. And the two roommates do a great job. Both a part of the run to Dallas last year, back with all of that experience, and certainly uh, still hungry for more for this Hokie squad that uh, is reminding everybody in the ACC tonight just how deadly they can be when everybody's on the floor. Nice little look. And the finish just as true. Augusta Nida has, uh, she's hobbled just a little bit. She kind of gingerly works her way toward that Georgia Tech bench and may have asked for a chance to, to catch a little bit of a breather as she worked her way over to Nell Fortner. But she's, she's provided a spark tonight. Such a good player. More than just a shooter, she's a scorer. Cleaned up on the inside. Relentless effort. Stays with Virginia Tech. Hokie's going to get a three look out of it. Wenzel too strong. And in the end, Georgia Tech will clear it. Inside five remaining in the opening half. You're keeping an eye on it, 16 of 26. The birthday girl at end point guard now, Sydney Johnson. Down the left side is Carter, and the foul is drawn. Yeah, yeah you, you see Augusta Nida coming back out. We're checking her status here in a moment as she is a, a bit hobbled for Georgia Tech. 4.28 remaining in the half. Sizable advantage having been built by Virginia Tech early. Looks like you won something there. Stu, Georgia Amor and Elizabeth Kitley complement one another. Roommates are supposed to know each other. When to say something, when not to say something. Watch this. Georgia takes the defense with her. Guess who's open? the best player in the ACC. Reminding you why, already having posted 17 on this night as a trio of rebounds as well does Kitley, her presence more than known in this one. But coach, you know, you're reminded with the return of Amor what it has meant for Kitley with this start. Just how much of an elevation even to Kitley's game. Amor provides, and it's vice versa. It's the other way around as well. Yeah, and, and again, we can show you statistically, you know, literally 42% of the field goals that they make, she either makes or assists on, but but it's way even more than that. You, know, you, you feel the crowd and the energy. Amor is really special. And, of course, she's going uh, up against Tony Morgan, who's playing awfully well tonight too. Yeah, you're talking about a, a couple of the uh, top uh, distributors in the ACC when you look at the – the list of five. They certainly find their names there. Just over four minutes to play. Hokies workmanlike effort in the interior for Clara Strack, who comes away with another bucket. She's already eclipsed her average scoring tonight. A good night already for Strack. Just a freshman, and she is going to be a, another special post player. Well, plenty to be pleased with on this possession for Carter the Georgia natives on this roster able to work her way to the line for an and one chance. Here's a look at it. Carter's an interesting player. I have seen her just take over a game. She's so difficult to guard. You know, she can put that body on you down low and create some space. Uh, uh, like I said, I've seen her have some big scoring games where the matchup just works for her. And you saw a, an example of that right there. Aviance Carter. She's out of Norcross. One of the seniors on this uh, trending younger roster for Georgia Tech. They high on the, the class that was just signed and what it's going to mean to the future of this Jackets program. And coming off of what Coach Fortner said was the toughest year of her coaching career a year ago, but she stuck it out with so many of these youngsters. This is a team that was hungry, so they weren't going to allow that to happen again. And the recent returns in the ACC indicating just how much they've grown up. Here's a three ball 
from Baker, and everybody has been involved for Virginia Tech in this first half. Suffering to Baker, a couple freshmen. You're going to hear their names called a lot going forward if you're a Virginia Tech fan. Suffering, of course, uh, out of Charlotte, connecting with the Connecticut native. Baker, the latest of 18 field goals in 28 tries in this first half for Virginia Tech. Termas with the three-point shot right there. Kitley didn't get out on her. We told you Termas is a real shooting threat and playing much better lately. Of course, number 33 for Virginia Tech is a scoring threat also. Yeah, Kitley grabs a couple of those right back on the other end of the floor. And you can give Kitley 19 in this first half alone. Remember, she's coming off of the latest of the 30-point games, trending that direction again. They feed it to the interior, and this is laid home by Blackshear. Boy, if they could get Blackshear going, Georgia Tech would, would certainly see dividends from that. Blackshear Try is really good. A great athlete, a great family tradition. She posted the freshman Baker up that time. Tried to step out, swat away the pass there. Was it to be, but Georgia Tech comes away with possession after all. Two and change remaining in the opening half. Suffren whistled as the foul is called just outside the top of the key. Wenzel coming back in. And that will be for Suffren. Smart on, to the line. Smart on Georgia Tech. Smart Virginia Tech has put them in the bonus, and now they're taking it to the rim off the dribble. You know, I'll say it again, Coach, she's unable to revel this first one down is Morgan. But if she knocks this second free throw down, you're talking single digits, the deficit for Georgia Tech. Her team able to accomplish that, though the Hokies have shot 66% from the field in this first half. Yeah, they, they, Georgia Tech's getting a little more confident. He's getting a little more settled in. They did not let the Hokies run them out of the gym in this first half, despite everything falling early. And here's a whistle. Looks like Morgan was involved in trying to slow the progress of Amor. Now the baseline out of bounds. This is the chess match between a great defensive coach and, and a, a, I think a, a, an offensive savant on the other end, and Kenny Brooks. He, yeah. He's so good in these special situations. Mindful of the NC State win, right? The last second shot laid home by Kitley on a Good Nicely job by drawn Georgia Tech, play. taking the taking the first couple choices away. You're telling me anytime there's not a basket there, it's a win. Yeah, for sure, that was a definite win for Georgia Tech on that baseline out of bounds. Four to shoot for the Hokies. A more will too strong back of the iron, and this eventually off and into the hands of Noredo. One twenty-two to play in the half. And looked like something happened underneath. Not yet getting up, and Georgia Tech shorthanded on the other end of the floor. They'll let this play out before stopping action, and this is a continuation in many ways of what's been some attrition for the Jackets in the early part of this game. Blackshear this time down, and she's favoring that left knee, Coach. Yeah, it couldn't really see what happened right there, but she had the post up against Baker down low again. She had scored once on a similar play. You hate to see anybody, and hopefully it's not serious. Blacks here are going to be taken. Well, with a minute and change remaining in the half, why not right up through the tunnel? Not too much necessarily to read into that as we get a look at exactly what happened. Yeah, it looked like planted the left, left leg. And he may have given a little bit again. You hope it's not anything serious at all. You know, Blackshear is really starting to get her feel of the game going. And Augusta Knight of the same way. She was playing well. We saw her hobbled a little yeah, bit actually, ago. Actually, after a made shot by Augusta Knight. Same type situation. Now Fortner looking on, as you saw there, has to be wondering, what can I do to keep all the bodies on the floor, keep everybody healthy? Termis has it up top. Inside a minute to go in the half. Underneath, and the foul is going to be whistled on Eck. Yeah, it's tough. Eck at the top of the key, outside the three-point line, having to guard Dunn all the way to the rim. Looked like she was in a pretty good position. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, a little bump with the body right there, and that's what they got. No worries for Eck, her first personal, but uh, those in the stands here at Castle 
disagree. Next had a good first half defensively for the most part. That was that was one of the tougher asks right there to guard Dunn from outside the arc all the way to the rim. As one of a couple of blocks for Virginia Tech. Also having pulled down a couple of boards, says Eck, and you talk about her work on the defensive end as well. Another free throw that goes. Six of eight for the Jackets in that department, and the lead suddenly just seven. What a bite. The Jackets have taken out of this lead late in the half. Here's Amor, baseline, lays it. In from the other side. Everything working for Amor. All set up by Samuel's offensive rebound. Just about three seconds differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Turnaround from distance. A little strong. Rebounded by Summion. Hope he's able to take the last shot. You'll love the ball in Amor's hand in this situation. Amor at the horn. It is the exclamation point on a tremendous shooting half for the Hokies and on the return of Georgia. Going, but you know she is going to get going at some point. Well, set to inbound, I guess tonight, Tay. Remember, she was uh, hobbling just a bit at one point in the first half. Looks no worse for the wear now. Blackshear was the other one that uh, we'll check the status of as we roll into this third quarter because you'll remember she left toward the end of the first half, went straight up the tunnel. Matt scramble for it. Tie up possession error. We'll keep it right where it is on this end of the floor. Yeah, long pass right there. Blackshear, you mentioned. There's a look, came out on crutches, and as you can see, looks comfortable on that Georgia Tech bench. Certainly not what you want to see for the Jackets. No, she, she's a real tough matchup and was starting to get going when she, when she got injured. Tremendous competitor who is responsible for, on average, 12-plus points per night for the Jackets. This one taken away by Kayla Keene. She, you remember, was injured in that Clemson contest on Sunday, but started tonight and has been a factor for the Hokies as well. Yeah, Money more so than Kitley and Amor down the left side, and she'll draw contact. Yeah, and Kayla King missed a lot of the first half, only played nine minutes due to picking up two quick fouls. Only able to, to notch a rebound, still looking for her first points of the contest, but her presence certainly felt, and a foul that will end up sending Amor to the line. That was on Adonis. Amor among the better free throw shooters in the league, 87%. Among the nation's leaders in assist, and she's continued that here tonight. It's the first personal foul on Juan Adonis. Comes at the 907 mark, third quarter, just underway. All right, we actually heard Coach Kenny Brooks' pregame speech. What do you think the halftime conversation was like? Well, I, I, you know, I think what he said at halftime to, to Kendall, you know, he, he, you know, he, he was a little, a little concerned about putting them on the free throw line, and they made six free throws in that second quarter, and that helped them win that quarter, 22 to 18. Off the glass, that rolls off and into the grasp of Sumio. Quickly up the floor with it, transition opportunity for Virginia Tech, and now Amor slows it back out directing traffic, as is the aforementioned Kenny Brooks. You see him up walking that Hokiesports.com section of the floor in front of the Hokies bench. Here's a three. It won't go. And it's off into the grasp of Dunn. Another set play where Georgia Amor can go with the right hand. Well, maybe took the right hand there. Did took the right look like, to some degree. Looked like some, some contact. I don't know if it was above the neck or whatever, but Whatever the case, she draws an offensive here. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, just a hand. Not anything vicious. Amor, by going to the floor, drew the offensive foul, and it'll be a turnover and into the hands of the Hokies. Interior, Kitley, and slicing toward the bucket was Summiel, but a whistle before she can drive through there. Adonis 
really a physical player. Didn't get didn't get to play a lot in that first half, but uh, a lot of the reason was Kitley got off to such a great start. But she's probably the most physical defender for Kitley down low. Juan Adonis, one of the Spaniards on this squad. Everybody watching as Amor tickles the twine from beyond the arc once more. She is now two of four from downtown and has 16 total, trailing only Kitley with 19. Trying to find a way toward the hoop with too much size in the interior. The foul will be drawn, and a couple of shots are coming as a result. Yeah, Matilda Act, let her, let her get by, and sometimes Act with her size can still bother that shot. That time she got a piece of Morgan, who's been really good tonight, and, and that was a factor for Georgia Tech. She had things going with 12 points in that first half, set out the last four minutes with two fouls. Yeah, give me a breakdown on the sophomore from Tallahassee based upon what you've seen, not just tonight, but on the year from Morgan. And she's such a good athlete, and she's, I think, still learning to play the point guard spot. Very unselfish, but but she can, she can really have a big impact on a game defensively and offensively and running the floor in transition, pushing the basketball down the floor. Absent Blackshear is going to be the combo of she and Bonnie for the Hokies. Samuel again, and high five on the back end of this result as the lead grows. It's a three, it'll rattle off. Kitley pulls down the board. Great pass on the last possession by Kitley. And Samuel again just took her time and got the ball in the basket from point blank range. If you're wondering about it, that was Kitley's fifth rebound, and she'll be knocked to the floor here trying to corral the basketball on an interior pass. Yeah, Morgan's third right there. Yeah, Morgan, as you said, didn't get to play as much as they would have liked in that first half, picked up a couple, and here's a third much earlier than Coach Sportner would have liked. Yeah, she, she was already lobbying with Coach Fortner. I, I'm okay, I'm okay, leave me in. A more weighing option, does send it in to Kitley. A little short on this shot into the hands of Morgan. Yeah, good physical boy, Adonis right there being real physical. Flattened Kitley's shot out a little bit. made something happen. The feed inside, stolen away by Egg. That was a really good defensive play by Kayla King. Back out to Amor. So hard to stay in front of the yellow, uh, in front of the yellow jackets. They have so many people who can beat you off the dribble. Interior. Kittle, enough of a window to shoot. And she's got up over 20 now by knocking home her 10th bucket of the night. Now they are loving what they're seeing. The contingency and support of Elizabeth Kitley as a North Carolina native is once more putting together one of the premier performances for the Hokies. Back with more from Blacksburg on the other side of the break. I'm a guy who lost a bet. And Back at Lively Castle Coliseum, timeout on the floor gives us a chance to check in once more with Kendall Williams. A truly inspirational figure of the Blacksburg community was honored here at halftime of tonight's game. Charles Johnson, the owner of Upscale Barber Shop in downtown Blacksburg, Virginia, cut hair for the Corps cadets here at the Virginia Tech Barber Shop in the 1960s and 70s. His supervisor told him he was only allowed to cut the hair of African-American cadets either before or after hours. But it wasn't long before he took a stand and allowed them to come in anytime. He was a huge support system and mentor for those cadets of color, and at almost 93 years old, he's still giving some of the best haircuts in town. Jason. Thanks, Kendall. Back to work here at the 618 and ticking downward mark third quarter. You know, I asked you, Coach, a little bit earlier what you thought the conversation was like from Kenny Brooks at the half. Nothing but air here in Georgia Tech at a spot where they're really looking for the answers right now. What do you think the conversation is like in that Jackets home. I think they said, "Listen, you know, they, they had they had a couple incredible performances, and we're still in this thing. We just have to do what we do: play defense, 
take advantage of the matchups on the offensive end and keep grinding away, enough, like all Nell Fortner teams do. You got that right. Enough disruption from Amor that Morgan dribbled that off her foot. So Georgia Tech had to retreat, set things up, and thinking it was cleanly blocked, Samuel kind of looks at the official in disbelief the foul is called. I think if we're taking the popular vote here, we're thinking this is a block. Well, there may have been a little body right there, but certainly with the hand on the ball, that's clean. Ends up going in the books as a second personal against Samuel, and the first goes down for Tony Morgan. Morgan in this one, 14 points, 5 of 11 from the field, and having knocked down four of now six opportunities from the charity strike. Yeah, we'll see if Kara Dunn gets going now. Still hadn't made a field goal in this game. Now whistle again, out top this time. See a couple that are getting set up top as the inbounds come. Looks like there's gonna be shooting here and, and Coach, that was the dreaded moment in terms of Morgan as she ends up picking up her four, or, or actually check that, as she's playing with three, is working her way over to the sideline for instructions from Nell Fortner right now. Yeah, and, and also along those lines in terms of being important, that's the fifth foul. Virginia Tech now in the bonus with five and a half minutes left in this quarter. Yeah, long way to go, and Kitley able to make it count as her numbers just keep on climbing. And now number five, here's Morgan up the floor with it. Here's Dunn, top of the key. Looking inside, that one is cleanly blocked. Samuel again, and now they're gonna say tie up. Possession arrow is with Georgia Tech, so it stays with the Jackets. Yeah, and Samuel got this start uh, based a lot on her defense, and she was a good matchup for, for a couple different Yellow Jackets, and this is really good. Stay between your man and the basket, contest the shot, and even get a piece of it if you can. And then you see the scramble for it on the floor, and that's where it results. Tie up on this end. Here's the inbound. A quick inbound to Morgan. The shot just will not go down. Morgan made a nice play, but a good block from behind by Carly Wenzel. Amor goes around the world, ends up dumping this off to Kitley, doesn't get the roll. Possession, it seems, for Georgia Tech. Thomas puts it on the floor. Turn right back her direction. 4 3. Won't go. Boards cleaned by Samuel again. Samuel with a good box out right there. Her seventh rebound of the game already. You read my mind. How about that? Seven boards pulled down. Everybody on the floor. She's the leader. Kitley with six tucked right in behind her among this group. Turn around, trying to fade away. Thought perhaps she was fouled as she went palms to the sky, but there was no whistle. And here's Morgan, gathers it up, but back into the hands of Kitley. Yeah, Morgan got caught on Kitley that time, and Kitley took her time, but when Morgan did a good job of contesting the shot, couldn't finish on the other end, threw some contact near the rim. For the first time in the game, you look up, Virginia Tech shooting less than 60% from the floor. 60 plus the majority of the way. Of course, Georgia Tech up under 40% at 38 to be specific to this juncture in the game. And this is a Georgia Tech team looking for something to go down. You know, we talked about Georgia Tech going small. In some ways, that's an advantage for them. But on the other hand, Virginia Tech's got a, a little bit of a size advantage at, at a lot of positions, which has served them well, especially on the defensive end. Not that time so much. Going to wave this off, but the foul is called. We'll take a look on the other side of the break. 57-38, the lead his team holds it home. I'm a parking gate, and I'm all out of whack. Well, a two-minute stretch, game action at least, in which there have been no field goals. The scoring limited in the third quarter. That's been an aberration when you look at the scoring we've seen tonight. 
Yeah, <laughs> both teams have turned up the wick on the defensive end. And, and uh, Virginia Tech is an underrated defensive team. And, of course, Georgia Tech, that's really their identity. They play defense first, and and uh, and then they've got some outstanding individual players on the offensive end, too. But, uh, but yeah, defense is winning the third quarter. Let's see what Coach Fortner has drawn up on this possession. Jackets were, were hanging around at the half, still right there around single digits, despite the hot shooting first half for Virginia Tech, and a much-needed bucket is driven home by Termis from distance. Yeah, and, and that's just call play after the timeout. Now Fortner with a really good job right there, and poor communication between Kitley and Wenzel. Either a switch was supposed to take place or the, the help was supposed to be a little bit quicker, but left Termis wide open, and she has been playing so well lately. The freshman out of Spain. Yeah, one of the Spaniards on this squad. Of course, uh, this is a team loaded with international talent, this Georgia Tech squad. Made the trip abroad into Europe over the summer, one of many programs to do so. Talked about how that helped this team come together, jail as a unit. They, they saw the home locations, got to eat some of the favorite foods of uh, a number of the players on this squad. Nothing like that for a young team to develop chemistry, but nothing like knocking down a couple of shots in a row to get your legs underneath you if you're Georgia Tech. Yeah, 0 for 8. What's the answer? Make a couple. Amor down the lane. She will answer by laying it off the glass. Amor has 18. She and Kitley, who has 23, reminding everybody here in Blacksburg what a duo they are for the Hokies. Augusta Nida. Drops it right through the net. How about that shot? True yeah, she's shot. Back to back. She she has a lot of confidence. Virginia Tech has to pay a special attention to her. She's not just a shooter. She is a scorer. It seems to be no worse for the wear after we saw her a, a little bit, like we said, kind of gingerly working to the sideline earlier. She's in double figures with 12. You know where Liz Kitley is. She is now sitting at 25 points to lead all scorers on the night. Johnson with it, you said it. Birthday accolades her direction on this night. Ends up being nothing but air from the far side. That's out of bounds. Yeah, Kayla, King, Kayla King switched over on Augusta Knight at that time. And again, she's, she's their best perimeter defender for Virginia Tech. Let's come over to Wenzel. Here is King. And right back to Wenzel. More than one body on Kitley. She somehow dribbles away and finds an open side of the rim from which to lay it home. That's what I was talking about, the improvement in her game. More diversity in what she can do. She split the double short. She beat the double team and laid it up on the other side of the basket. You know, Kitley, 31 points, 18 rebounds, and five blocks. One of the, the big moments in the Cayman Islands. You think about all the 30-point performances. Picked up her 10th against Clemson here on Sunday. Trending that way again. 27 already on the board. And everybody to the deck. Well, Kitley looked like she may clean that up in the end. Instead, it's into the hands of Strack. And there will be no bucket for Virginia Tech this time down. It was great effort. Everybody on the floor. Everybody working hard. Couldn't get the finish for Virginia Tech. Georgia Tech kept battling. Came away with the ball. Key, 10 to shoot. Gun goes down the lane. Strack will have none of it, and here comes Amor. There's that size advantage we talked about. Kick out to Keen. Three rims off. Well, that would have really created some separation for Virginia Tech in the closing seconds of the third. That would have brought the roof down. <laughs> yes, it would. The crowd was anticipating King making that shot. Just off the mark. And no time to heave it as it'll sit at 63-45. Hope the crop when you look at things nationally, Coach. Yeah, yeah, certainly the best women's basketball, I think, in the country. Deep and really good. You were talking tears prior to the game today as we were discussing how the ACC is broken down. You, you don't know what you have right yet. 
in terms of Notre Dame with some of the pieces not completely there. NC State has been what NC State has been, but Virginia Tech had the big win. When you talk about head-to-head -head there, your take on the ACC as a whole right now. Yeah, seven ranked teams. I think that says a lot, of course, again, about the depth. And look at what Duke is doing tonight to Florida State, a, a ranked team. And, of course, Duke is so good at Cameron Indoor. Yeah, both these teams have found that out in recent days, right? Exactly. Augusta Knight picking up the foul just a moment ago. Here's Kitley with the turnaround as the next sequence begins, but this is often into the hands of Morgan. Is this down to Dunn? Dunn 0 of 8 from the floor tonight. Morgan, who has it in her hands, 14 points to lead the way alongside the 12 of Augusta Knight for Georgia Tech. You get the sense the run has to start now, perhaps the makings of it right there as Morgan lays a bucket home. Yeah, and that was an ISO, a called play for Morgan from, from Coach Fortner on the bench with that right-hand dribble. She got all the way to the rim in a hurry. She has 16 also pulling down a trio of rebounds. Just the one assist for Morgan on the night maybe grabs your attention. And discussion about who this was off of. They're going to come in and our officials to talk about it like they are going to award possession yeah. to Virginia Tech. The ball didn't rotate. Somebody touched the ball for sure. So I think that was the right call. Kitley with it in her hands as we start the fourth. She has 27. Shot Amor clock. with 18, just five to shoot on this possession. Amor will make it 21, her third three of the night. And Amor, who has been welcomed back to the fold by the faithful in Blacksburg, has been equal to the task. Shot clock, game clock, it doesn't matter to Georgia Amor, but she better get a hand off on Augusta Nida because she is rolling right now. 15 for Augusta Nida, 14 actually, check that. The official numbers for Augusta Nida, she drops home her second field goal of the contest, or excuse me, sixth field goal of the contest. Here's a whistle there. And it's gonna be foul. Termas over the back right Termas there. Termas for Georgia Tech. Just a, that's a third for Termas now that she picks up. Wenzel departing here. Greeted by her teammates. Back into the hands of Amor. By the way, double-double already with the 11 assists for Amor. And she keeps adding to that total as the finish this time is provided by Eck. Did I, did I mention that Kenny Brooks is pretty good on baseline out-of-bounds? You know, this is another evidence of just what he can draw up. And how about Eck, who was the other Hokie in double figures with 16 and four three-pointers the last time out uh, to, to, to really kind of begin to emerge in this last stretch for Virginia Tech. She's been good, been she good all year, but here. much more consistent lately. Of late, yes, that's a great point, Coach. Of course... 2.7 threes per league game. Third in the ACC, had another there. Picks up the rebound on the other end of the floor and back into the hands of Amor it goes. It was a good look by Georgia Tech at the back of the rim. Virginia Tech doing a good job of not allowing a second shot. On the corner, looking for another. This time it rattles off. And a traveling call is going to be the result of this. It'll come right back to Georgia Tech. As, uh, in a mad scramble to secure the basketball, they'll say Samuel wasn't able to keep, I guess in this case, the knees planted. Great hustle by Samuel. And I don't think she had possession until she got the ball on her knees. But uh, bang, bang, call. Officials have a tough job. Not as tough as ours, but but tough. Oh, no. We got the best seat in the house no at the time question. of our lives with what we've seen tonight. No question. This one having been, as all nights in the ACC seem to be, an absolute pleasure. And happy to have you with us here on the network. Down the lane. Wide open spaces. But closing quickly is Kitley. Yeah. And Virginia Tech is the number 10 team in the country with block shots. And, of course, Kitley is the leader. They've already got more than their per game average with six now. Well, she came in 37 of those. And, you know, she in many ways, <laughs> the leader, when you talk about uh, ACC blocks in more ways than one, and her individual numbers, eclipsing so many of the team numbers. And 
Just a remarkable moment for Kitley, and I'll go back to it, just kind of underscore it, Coach. Her closing speed there, the wingspan, and the ability to get to the basketball, impressive. Again, another example of her improvement. Down the left side, and here's Amor, and she drains this. It's usually Amor giving the ball to King. This time, King gives it to Amor. Her fourth three-point basket of the night, 24 for Amor, alongside Kitley's 27, and Virginia Tech starting to open it up here in the fourth. Baseline dribble. Amor relocates. And the Hokies lead grows. Looks like you won something there. Yeah, I did my test guy and switched to H&R. Hey, Coach, Seems all this team needed was a return home. Yeah, that'll do it. The castle is a special place for Virginia Tech men's and women's basketball. The women have been especially good, 16-1 in the magical run of last year to the Final Four, and this season, perfect. You know, you, you add that up, and in the 2023 calendar year, 17-0 at home. And the splits are as impressive as well. This is a team that has just uh, put the margins together like you're seeing tonight when they're in this building. An answer out of the timeout for Georgia Tech, but, uh, you know, a nice crowd in here again tonight, Coach. The students having shown up once more, and they're on the verge of running the streak to 13 ACC games and 21 overall contests in a row, one in this facility. One of the main reasons that's the case is because in the interior, 33 keeps knocking down <laughs> shots. Yeah, that uh, that makes a lot of people want to come out to Castle. And uh, Season tickets were sold out this year for the women, and they've had a couple sellouts already. Uh, one more number, our fine crew digging up for you just to show how good Virginia Tech has been here. 22 the margin in ACC games in this facility on average this season. Yeah, that's amazing. Augusta Knight tried to cut into that margin the last time down, but the answer from Olivia Samuel. That'll extend it. Samuel in double figures. She becomes the third alongside Kitley and Amor on this night with that tray. And I know what you're keeping an eye on with 77 going up on the board. Yeah, I think it is bow time. Yeah, certainly going to be a, a biscuit in the future of the fans who come out to support the Hokies on this night. An answer for Georgia Tech, but they just have been unable to put together the type of run because everything that Georgia Tech has done in a positive manner has been answered with something, and in most cases on both ends of the floor by the Hokies. Yeah, coming out of the timeout, they've hit back-to-back -back baskets, but, but, but they haven't cut into the margin because Virginia Tech has answered on the other end. Yeah, well, Samuel's three, one of the reasons for that. Here's one more glance at it. Yeah, and one more assist for Georgia Amor. Samuel, two rebounds away from a double-double. 13 assists for Amor, including the one you just witnessed, and she has the double-double with the 24 points to go along with it, talking, of course, about Amor. Kitley, a nice round of applause. She and King both take a seat far side. Amor tries to keep that alive and attempting to corral it in the corner over there was Strack. And we talk about Samuel, and this is only her third start of the season. She's mostly been a... a a come off the player kind of contributor. Four of four from the floor. Two of two from beyond the arc. The eight rebounds that coach documented alongside the 10 points for Summit. Brad transfer, of course, from Wake, as he told you toward the start of things, what an addition she has been. The offensive foul sends it the other way. Samuel getting set to inbound this. Three of the last three for Georgia Tech from the floor, but the same thing for Virginia Tech. And the lead holds steady at 77-56 with four and change to play. Now that kicked as it worked in the direction of Noredo. Strack and Thomas Harris for Georgia Tech were battling hard down low. There was a lot of contact. Keep an eye on that. Amor directing plenty of traffic before she tosses it inbound. 
the left hand. And speaking of contact in the interior, this time the recipient of it is Eck. And the foul is going to be picked up by Noredo. I think that will be a shooting foul. In the, in the bonus regardless. Yeah, that happened quick in the third. Take a look at the separation that has been created by a Virginia Tech team that you know, cooled off up under 60, but still shooting 56% from the floor tonight. The opportunities at the free throw line, for the most part, having been seized, five of six there. As Eck looks to knock down another, she will and make Hokies it six of seven. Has it been really good from long range here in the fourth quarter, four out of seven, and that has uh, pushed that lead out over 20. Well, when you're returning one of your stars, as Virginia Tech has tonight in the case of Amor, who's going to take care of business on the baseline with this inbound, this is the type of result that you hope you get. You can see it in the body language and in the communication from Coach Brooks at the half. But with the way his team has created the separation in the second half, Coach, you know he's going to be even more pleased with what the outcome is trending toward here. Yeah, and good execution. Again, on the out-of-bounds play, got a wide-open look from... Carly Wenzel. Morgan puts this on the floor. She'll she's find a way to drive that down. She's been so good. She's been really good at getting to the rim, putting the ball in a basket through contact. And the young sophomore from Tallahassee still fighting to the tune of an 18-point night. No, big competitor, and she'll keep battling. So you got to remember, this is a night in which uh, Georgia Tech, toward the end of the half, lost black cheer. You think about it. Her impact, Blackshear's impact, and Dunn, and what that trio is supposed to be. Speaking of impact, here's Wetzel down the right side of the lane. And you will hear the reaction of the fans as she's got the N1 opportunity coming. Boy, just uh, Thomas Harris picking up the first personal. Listen to the reception for Amor as she works her way over for a well-earned breather. Yeah, the freshman suffering coming in for Amor. Amor and Kitley now join each other on the bench. The roommates had a heck of a night here in Castle. And suffering who is coming in here, a career high 22 minutes against the Tigers last time out. Three points, four assists along the way in that contest as she sees action again. Yeah, had, had played extended minutes and since Shot by Johnson, played extended minutes because Amor wasn't available and the freshman was up to the task with the bright lights on. It's a birthday moment for Sydney Johnson as she knocks down an impressive three ball. Lead at 20 for Virginia Tech as the Hokies go to work. Inside three minutes to play at Castle. The night in which uh, Virginia Tech shot the lights out in the first half and then pulled away in this fourth quarter, and that trend continues. Samuel again, this time with the follow and the finish. Yeah, I got that ninth rebound. You know she'd love to have that double-double. One more alongside the 12 points she has secured tonight would be enough. Morgan again continuing to battle and compete. Learn a lot about your stars on a night like this, do you not, Coach? Yeah, on both sides of the floor, both ends of the scoreboard. Some you're going out now, won't get that double-double, a -double rebound away as Harris Baker, the freshman, comes in. Another nice round of applause from, as we told you a couple of times early on, a really nice crowd here in Blacksburg. That's the other thing about this facility, and we gave you the numbers on how well Virginia Tech plays here, but with the conference title last year, with the run to Dallas last year, I mean, this program has become uh, one of those that has built a very unique relationship with the community, and it's showing up on nights like this. Yeah, and, and this is all a, a product of the Kenny Brooks era. Yes. Two and change to play. Wetzel. Suffering as that is swatted away. Augusta Nida in there to turn it aside. Suffering's a, a you know, highly recruited player. We've got some explosion really quick. But in amongst the trees, she didn't get that one to the rim. Now Morgan there to contest as well. Open look off the screen, but that is going to be back of the iron. Cleaned up, sent right back to Eck. Trying to work baseline. Able to do so. Strong off the glass for Strack. Fans are 
Lions are, are seeing the future of post play here. After Liz Kitley, it's in pretty good hands with Thera Strachan. Well, and what, what a nice moment it is for the Hokies to be able to, to bring those leaders off the floor, let them sit and watch for just a moment, kind of reflect upon what this evening has been. It is a reminder and certainly something, you know, Coach Brooks and his staff want to let sink in what happens when all hands are on deck. Nice drive down the left side and an and one opportunity coming as the Jackets just keep on fighting inside the last 90 seconds of the game. Yeah, Morgan in particular has just been so impressive from the very beginning tonight. You know, and, and that hurt for Georgia Tech when she got her second foul and sat out basically the last four minutes of the second quarter. You saw Nell Fortner, the coach of the Jackets, reminding us just how young her team is. She is very high on the recruiting class that is coming in and how much maturity there's going to be from one game to the next, from one season to the next for the likes of Dunn and Morgan, as we've documented for sure. Yeah, and if you can have a lot of players coming back that contribute, that, that's really important to the continuity and then the, the success of the program for both of these coaches. And kind of somewhat quietly as it's in Morgan's hand, she has put together that uh, career night and will add to it as she goes down the lane. You know, you, you look up and all of a sudden she's up over 20 points, has four rebounds and has also notched a couple of assists. She's sitting at 25 as she gets set to go to the line. So after a start that maybe was not exactly what the Jackets uh, had hoped she really has come on in the final three quarters of this contest. She really has. I and mean, we've talked about what she's done on the offensive end, on the defensive end. She's had the responsibility of chasing the likes of Georgia Amor all over the floor, too, which is not an easy night. Absolutely. So quite a performance as she caps it, perhaps with this free throw. Eight of nine from the stripe, and she has 26. Inside the final minute, as you begin to reflect a little bit on what we have witnessed in this one tonight, Coach, what are your takeaways from what Virginia Tech has been able to do? Well, I think they, you know, again, they, they saw more people step up, even though the stars were the stars tonight. But but a lot of different people contributed to this win tonight for Kenny Brooks's group. We talked about movement in the ACC at Syracuse coming up. Then, of course, the Commonwealth Clash to open the month of February. And then a big one on the road in Chapel Hill against North Carolina. NC State looms behind that. So heading into a stretch that will be critical in late January and early February. Virginia Tech has a win to build on. It goes final at 87-69. The return of Georgia Amor.